Hey guys, what's going on? So, our Biken is raised. She is pretty much maxed. Uh, still, of course, some skill enhances to do. We have no Molagors anymore, but I think we got the most important. Uh, so, oh, she's up here. Uh, so yeah, we have this one up at plus four, this one up at plus two. I would like to get her second skill a little bit higher, but alas, we can't. So, but I think she's good enough to really look at her in a closer light. Uh, as in tradition, we're going to start with her skill set, uh, just do a general overview of her to start with. So her first skill can bleed the target. It's not a super high chance at the start at 45, but that can go up to 70%, which is much higher. It is two bleeds for two turns, which is pretty nice. And on her second skill, we, we have an up to 80% chance for three bleeds for two turns. Also, a critical hit will grant an extra turn. And finally, her ult, the best thing about her, she'll detonate any current bleeds on the enemy. And one part that I pretty much completely forgot about while I was summoning and saying she wasn't that great and everything was the up to 25% all ally combat readiness increase. This is actually quite good, quite good indeed. I was trying her in Arena and I was still taking Judith, which gives 30% combat readiness for the whole team, but if you were to get her very fast, she could be your one and only combat readiness increaser. And if you can get her other stats up to snuff, you can potentially have four DPS in there, as well as a combat readiness increaser, you know? With the S2, S3 combo, she has not failed yet to kill the target she sets out to. However, she was just going for other damage dealers that weren't built super tanky, so that is something to take into consideration. However, once you get rid of the damage dealers and the strong, dangerous ones, when you just have healers left to deal with, it's not that big of a deal anyway. So at second glance, her skill set is actually quite good in my opinion, but as detonate is a new thing, I do want to test it a little bit, and so my assumption is that it basically deals the damage the bleeds would have done over time, just all at once in a burst. So we're going to either confirm or not confirm that, with a simple little test. We're looking at the bleed damage for now. So he's got two bleeds on him. Hopefully <laughs> our lady can survive until he gets hit. So that was 2230. It's kind of weird though, when she detonates, it looks like a critical as well. So since that was 2230, that means each bleed did 1115 damage. Now we're just gonna ult and we should see. So the damage difference from the ult and then when the bleed effects happen, uh, yeah. That was a little bit too fast for me to see and actually like do any calculations. So while I'm editing, I'm probably gonna put up some some numbers or some words or whatever and uh, come to any sort of conclusion there. But obviously detonating bleeds is way more powerful than just kind of doing all bleeds at once because it looks like bleed itself doesn't critical, isn't based off critical damage, but perhaps hers can and do. Talking stats now, let's look at her max base stats. 1228 attack is okay. It's not the highest I've ever seen, but uh, it's serviceable for a damage dealer. Uh, speed is very good at 113. Again, not the highest, but still well above average. She has a crit chance awakening, giving her a 23% base crit chance when she's fully maxed, uh, which is cool. Mine has well over 100%. Unfortunately, uh, I gave her gear based on because she had like three level 12s and Unfortunately, like two of those pieces of gear went to crit chance like this went to crit chance and she already had a hundred at that point I gave her this crit chance necklace um, So talking further about stats most important stat for her is critical hit chance because Every single one of her skills does something extra with a critical hit first skill will decrease the cooldown of the third skill Second skill will grant an extra turn, and third skill will increase the combat readiness of all allies by 25%. So, no matter how you choose to build her, make sure she has 100% critical hit chance. First priority. Second priority, I would probably have to say is speed, especially if you're going to be taking her into arena as your sole combat readiness increaser, because you want her to go first. She has a decently high base speed, and if you could bump that up a lot, you probably could get away with having her as your sole combat readiness increaser. Uh, taking someone like Ruzid alongside her uh, to bump up her own speed through memory imprint 
could be an idea as well. And it could be pretty viable as well, considering she can do very good damage herself as well. After that, it's going to be attack. The damage bleed does is proportional to the caster's attack. I don't know how proportional it is when she detonates them because that just seems like a whole nother ball game. It probably has to do with attack and crit damage. Uh, that's what it seems like because the bleed detonating did crit. So I would have to assume it does work like that. However, you wanna make sure she also has a good amount of effectiveness. 41 is a bit too low in my taste, uh, which is what she has currently. So I would be switching some stuff around, but as you can see, my gold is abysmal. I had like five or six million yesterday but um, you know how it goes with a new hero, right? Uh, so I would like to bump that up to at least 50%. That would be good. It would actually be amazing considering she also needs crit chance, attack, and speed. So that comes to our first sort of con about Biken is that she is insanely hard to build. No doubt. She needs a lot of stats. She absolutely needs the crit chance, so there's no getting away from that. If you're not going to build her with 100% crit chance, don't just don't build her. There may be ways to get around having 100% crit chance like... I think there are a couple units that can boost crit chance, so eh, maybe, but then again, they would, if you're going to be using her as a combat readiness increaser, they would have to be faster than her, give her that crit chance so she can, you know. But yeah, that's the first thing. Takes a ton of resources. Uh, also, her skills. Every single one of her skills are quite beneficial when you Mulagora them up, especially her ult. Again, you get 10% more combat readiness from 15 to 25. That can make a massive, massive difference. Her second skill, higher effect chance. This is also very important because the more effect chance you have here, the more bleeds you'll get, and then the more her ult will do once you do it, potentially killing whoever she targets. I would say her basic attack is more important for PvE because you're not going to be one-shotting anything. Probably more important than her second and her ult if you are primarily going to be using her for PvE. I've heard she's good for Golem and Banshee hunts. Uh, don't know about Raid yet. We could probably try taking her in there, although I would say she would perform pretty much as well as any other random DPS, probably. Gear-wise, what I have on her is the Arena Necklace with the 60% crit chance. Kind of hurts to have a crit chance necklace, but eh, what can you do? Also, 60% crit damage on it's okay. Uh, we also have Attack Percent on the Heroic Ring. Speed boots, 42 weapon, but it does have 19% attack and 6 speed, so it's actually not that bad. Helm with 27% attack, 20% crit damage, a very, very good helmet. And the chest with um, not very good subs, but regardless, it's fine. I wanted to do the attack set and effectiveness set. For arena purposes, you probably want to go speed set and hit set, perhaps, depending on what you're lacking. But speed set, most likely, you can see mine's at 173 without even focusing on speed besides the speed boots, so she's not super hard to get a lot of speed. Giving her the speed set should easily get her over 210, maybe 220, especially if you start giving her gear with actual speed subs. It's just then she suffers in other departments, so it's kinda, it's really, it's really hard to balance her. And that's what I was coming back to with takes a lot of investment to get really good. But yeah, at least for me personally, her most interesting aspect is that she can be a damage dealer and combat readiness increaser all in one. With that said, let's try her in a couple of battles. We were doing some yesterday. Uh, let's go ahead and do some more. We have, this is the very first Moonlight says I've ever seen, so I'm a little bit scared. Still have Judith in there because she is not fast enough to be a solo combat readiness increaser. Hopefully Judith is faster than whoever, I think I think I remember the Moonlight says having tons of speed, but uh, regardless, let's just hope this doesn't turn out bad. Looks good to me. Gonna go ahead and increase all their combat readiness and we can see her in action. Who should we go for? So, Rose is kind of annoying, but it might be a waste. Like, I think once we get rid of the Moonlight says, we don't have too much to worry about anymore, so... Let's go for the Moonlight says. Don't know for sure if we can kill him because we have no elemental advantage. And, but, oh wow, we definitely can. Look at that. Look at how much damage her second skill did. Maybe the Moonlight says isn't, isn't built super well, but, uh, okay. Just for fun, we're gonna ult on him. We can see the damage here. Keep in mind, there's still 15% left damage to get on this skill from Molagoras. Pop 20k. Very nice. To keep in mind is that, uh, that 20k damage didn't even take into account her second skill. That, which also did a ton of damage, which also almost killed Says straight off the bat, so... She can do some damage, for sure. This is a wall comp, which I kind of didn't even look at, just went in. And that's kind of bad for our cleave, but... Um, we're still gonna try. If we can kill that uh, panda bear over there, 
might be good. Well, her second skill might kill him already. Maybe not, but oh no, what? I think she actually missed. So many buffs these guys have. Definitely a little bit close, but I guess we got this. Let's check out this damage here. We went, we went ahead and burned it just for fun. And uh, for 13, I mean, that was kind of tanky with a defense buff, but I guess that does kind of affect it as well. It's not like a uh, poison or anything just bleeds. We've got a light Kisa in there. I went in without knowing what she was doing and she increased on my cooldowns by a turn. We have to fight it eventually if we want to keep our win streak up anyway. Karen, Woo! We were faster. Good. Probably not by much though. Oh geez. Okay. Who are we going for? We could get rid of Karen probably without any doubt but plus I want to increase my combat readiness a little bit more even though it doesn't actually matter. I think we're all going next anyway. Kabomb. Boom. So ultimately, in a team like this, I don't know if it makes too much sense to have her there, but she does more damage than says anyway. It just says can also un unhealable, which is pretty nice sometimes. Let's go ahead and try this one. Try and get rid of their Luna. Half gone, half left. See if we can do it. Yeah. She was actually dead before the bleeds detonated. Look at all those delicious bleeds. Might not need them. Pop, there it goes. So the bleeds themselves don't do that much damage. I had four bleeds there and it only did like 3k. But, I mean, I guess that will depend on her attack as well. That, that's enough arena though. I would say she's solid. I'm sure there are other DPS that can do more and better there. But the fact she increases the combat readiness is very nice. Even though with Judith, I don't think I need it super hard, but... Regardless, if you don't have a combat readiness increaser, absolutely amazing. I don't have much experience with Golem or Banshee 11. I have completed Golem 11 a couple times. Don't really have a super dedicated team for it yet, but we're going to try. So we are going to be taking instead of who though. I guess we'll try instead of Ravi, but I don't know if that's really going to that's really going to work. Can see her ult again here on the turtle. 14k, not bad. So since she used her ult in the previous stages, we're gonna just try and stack up some bleeds to start uh, with her basic attack. This is a bit of an unlucky run since Angelica was constantly stunned, but we finally got that immunity and barrier going, so nice. Since that stupid plant always cleanses the bleeds, we're just going to try second skill and third skill combo, see how that kind of works. He resisted a lot of things, uh, but let's go ahead and give it a try. So, two bleeds currently, not really that much, but, you know, maybe in other circumstances we could have more bleeds. 10k, it's not that bad. I mean, we might be able to do it this time, we are on manual. I, I have done it a few times on full auto, so that's this is nothing really, really to go by, but uh, she could definitely be viable here if we could keep more bleeds going. We're just going to go ahead and finish him off with Shermie's ult because this is getting a little close. Um, so first impressions in Golem is kind of eh, but I would need to do it a lot more to actually get a grasp on it. I can imagine she'll do a lot better in Banshee because she does have the elemental advantage. Banshee's a little bit hard though because I don't have many other units that can do anything. Uh, most of my good units are kind of fire, so, you know, I'll be honest, I don't even know what this boss is doing currently, so... Keep that in mind. Another problem could very well be that my Biken doesn't have enough speed for this sort of stuff, for this sort of PvE stuff where you want to get a lot of bleeds going before you do her ult. Uh, but we're gonna try and get, uh, we're gonna try and get as many as we can here. Also, other units that can bleed would probably suit her pretty well uh, because as of now it's a little bit hard to get a ton of bleeds going um, just by herself. But alas, I don't have anyone else that can bleed. So that's probably also potentially a problem. That did some pretty good damage though there. No, don't disappear. Ow. No, so close. Bleed to death. Aw. Well, that was definitely the closest I've ever been. Like I was saying earlier though, you probably kind of need others that can bleed as well to really take advantage of that detonate, at least in uh, some PVE content. PvP, it doesn't really seem to matter. Just those two or three bleeds she can get with her S2 uh, do a lot already. But for PvE, I don't think it does enough without having at least one other uh, unit in there that can cause bleed. Uh, as for our artifact, I'm going with Torn Sleeve because I pulled it. I think extra turn type artifacts like Dust Devil or Rihanna and Luciel would also be quite good for her. Get more bleeds in there and then actually be able to use her ult. Uh, to detonate them. So in addition to being pretty hard to build, 
To make her super effective, you also need to build other units around her. So I guess that's the drawback. But if you do plan to invest that heavily into building a team around her for more PvE related content, then absolutely I'm sure she can be a beast. Also, if you just like the character, if you were playing Guilty Gear and she was just like a character you liked, then of course, why not? Go for it. If you happen to have Shurin, then she could be a good pair. However, her being fire is a little bit bad considering, you know, at least for Banshee, that's that's kind of a no-go. She'll get her combat readiness decreased all the time and decreased speed and all that, as well as, of course, taking more damage. Cigarette might be an option to pair with her. She can bleed. Uh, pretty low chance, though, until you Mulligore that up, and then even then it's still, like, 35%. Can do a bleed on her second but nothing on her ult. And yeah, there might be a couple others I'm not too familiar with bleeders, to be honest though, so there's still a chance for her to be buffed, I think, but at least for now, I still think she has a lot of potential in the combat readiness increasing department. 25% is quite a lot, and I think it's one of the highest combat readiness increases you can get. It's on par with Shadow Rose, but she also has a lot more base speed than Shadow Rose. And while it is 5% less than someone like Judith, and she does have a bit lower base speed than Judith, she can actually probably kill the one she ults on too. So that's pretty much my thoughts after raising Baikin, uh, giving her some okay gear. It's not perfect, probably would benefit from more speed, more effectiveness, but like, you, it's kind of hard to have everything, you know, when you need 100% critical rate as well. Make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. If I've overlooked something drastic, then please drop it down there. Leaving a like if you happen to enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks. As always for watching, and until next time.